Welcome guys to another video on labor economics. In this video, let's solve a practical example on labor demand. So the question is, there is a bakery and that bakery produces cake for the customers. And if the bakery has one labor, it produced 10 cakes, two labor, 10 cakes, three labor, 23 cakes, and four labor, 27 cakes. The question asks, the first one, A, to calculate the marginal product of labor. B, it says, do you observe the law of diminishing marginal return in the marginal product of labor or not? C, it says, if the price for each cake will be $10, calculate the marginal revenue product of labor. And D, it asks us to draw the marginal revenue product of labor curve which is equal to labor demand curve. And E is asked if the wage rate is a $10 per labor in each day, how much cake should this bakery produce and how many labor this bakery should employ? So let's start from the first one, marginal product of labor. As we know that the marginal product of labor is equal to the change in quantity over to the change in the number of labors. So here, if we move from zero to one workers, so the quantity of output will move from zero to 10. So the change in output is 10 and the change in labor is one. So 10 divided by one will be equal to 10. So the marginal product of labor for the first labor is 10. Marginal productivity of labor for the second labor, the change in output, we move from 10 to 18 will be 8, and the change in labor will be 1. 8 divided by 1 is equal to 8. When you hire the third worker, the output will move from 18 to 23, the change will be 5, and the change in labor is 1. So the marginal product of labor for the third worker will be five. Marginal product of labor for the fourth worker will be move from three to four. The change in labor is one. The change in its output will be four. So the marginal product of labor for the fourth worker will be four divided by one equal to four. Second, so this is the first one that we call, uh, calculated the marginal productivity of labor based on this simple formula. The second, do you observe the law of diminishing marginal return? Yes, exactly. As you see, in the first, when you hire the first worker, the marginal product of labor is 10. But by hiring the second worker's marginal product of labor is declined from 10 to 8. There is two reduction. When we move again from 2 to 3, the marginal product of labor declined from 8 to 5. There is three reduction. When we move again, from three to four, again, marginal product of labor declined from five to four. Again, there's another one reduction. So we observe the law of diminishing marginal return because as we hire more labor, the marginal product of labor is declining. So the third one, if the price is 10, calculate the marginal revenue product of labor. We know that the formula for marginal revenue product of labor is equal to marginal product of labor multiplied by marginal revenue. And in the perfect competitive market, marginal revenue is equal to price. Then marginal product of labor multiplied by price. So we have the price level is 10. And we have marginal productivity as well. <coughs> so the marginal revenue product for the zero is zero. <coughs> Sorry. The marginal revenue product for the first worker will be 100, then multiplied by 10. For the second worker, will be 18. For the third worker, will be 50. And for the uh, fourth worker, 10 multiplied by 4 will be equal to 40. This is the marginal revenue product of labor, which we calculated based on this formula. Marginal product of labor multiplied by the price level. So. This uh, fourth one or D is ask us draw the marginal revenue product of labor curve, which is exactly 
equal to the labor demand. So, if we want to draw the marginal re revenue product of labor, we need this column and the first column. So, if the labor is hired by the bakery is one, so we show labor here and marginal revenue product of labor in y axis. If the labor is one, if the labor is one, the marginal revenue product of labor is 100. The marginal revenue product of labor is 100. Labor is one, the marginal revenue product of labor is 100. This point. And if the labor is two, marginal revenue product will be 18. If the labor is two, the labor is two, marginal revenue product will be 80. This point. And if the labor that hired by the bakery is three, is three, the marginal revenue product will be 50. This point will be 50. And if the labor is four, marginal revenue product will be 40. The labor amount or the number of labor is four, marginal revenue product will be 40. This point. And if we connect these points, so we will have the marginal revenue product of labor curve, which is exactly equal to the demand curve. Just connect this line. So this one, this curve, is the curve for marginal revenue product of labor, which is equal to labor demand curve. If you don't know, why the marginal revenue product of labor is equal to labor demand curve. We learned from the previous video. I will put the link here so you can watch that video as well to know why the marginal revenue product of labor is equal to labor demand. Because marginal revenue product of labor can be equal to nominal wage rate. So the relationship between labor and wage rate is the labor demand curve. And the relationship between labor and marginal revenue product of labor is as well the labor demand curve. For the detail, you can watch the, another video that I have uh, talked about the uh, marginal revenue product and labor demand, how uh, labor demand can be equal to marginal revenue product. So, the E is asked as if the wage rate is $80 per day for each labor, how many cake the baker should produce and how many labor the baker should hire? So, in order to find out that one, how much the baker should hire and how many should produce, we should set the profit maximization condition, profit max condition. And profit max condition tell us that the labor demand should be set at the point that marginal revenue product of labor is equal to marginal expense of labor and marginal revenue product of labor is equal to wage rate because marginal expense of labor is equal to the wage rate that you pay for them so now at the point that marginal revenue product of labor is equal to the wage rate this is the profit maximization point and the labor demand and quantity of output should be set at that point. So see at which output level, at which output level and wage level, wage is equal to marginal revenue product of labor. So, so see here, when the company or the bakery produce two cakes, when the company produce two cakes, so we see that marginal revenue product of labor is exactly equal to the wage rate. So this is the profit maximization condition. So the profit maximization condition can be satisfied when the output level is two 
sorry, the labor, the number of labor is two, and the total number of output or cake that the bakery produces is thin. So the quantity of cake that the bakery should produce is a thin, and the labor demand at the profit maximization state should be equal to two. So finally, if the wage rate is equal to a T, the bakery should produce a thin numbers of cake and also hire two employees. So it was a practical example on labor demand based on the marginal revenue product of labor, marginal productivity, wage rate, and price of output in the market. I hope you enjoyed this practical example and learned how we can solve a practical example of labor demand. Hope you subscribe my YouTube channel. See you in the next videos.